So Sri Ram Akila Loka Dayakavishnam. He will bring peace to the world as he holds this child in his hand. He will bring peace to this entire world. Why? Because he's the ocean of peace and tranquility. Are we oceans of peace, my dear brothers and sisters? This is what you have to ask yourself. Is someone at the door? Maybe it's Sri Ram. <laughs> Dashrath is bringing him to, for us all to see. But it is a realization within, my dear brothers and sisters. Go ahead. Go ahead. So? Ice as Oh, okay, the ice maker. <laughs> the ice maker is excited about the Lama as well. So, my dear friends, the wonderful Guru holds Bharata in his hand. Now, not all children are the same, isn't that true? You can't have one child and think the other child is going to be the exact same and then have the third and think it's going to be that and the fourth the same. Every single child has its own vasanas. And what are vasanas? Vasanas are the habitual tendencies that we come into this world with. Every one of us has come into this world with these dormant and as well as awakened potentials. Some good, some bad. For example, I like the color red, then Kamala Niyanti does not like the color red. This is Vasana, my dear brothers and sisters. I like Chinese food, Sonali doesn't like Chinese food. <laughs> this is Vasana. These are the plays of our lives, my dear brothers and sisters. But here's the thing, if we're not careful, the Vasanas can take over our lives and point us more into the world, looking for happiness in the world of Rag and Dwesh. Rag and Dwesh, dono hote hai is man mein. Rag means likes, Dwesh means dislikes. I like something, I go for it, I get disappointed. I don't like something, I stay away from it, it comes to me, I am disappointed. There was once a man who was very sad and his family thought he was very sad also. So he went to work one day and his boss said, you know, we have to make some cuts, inflation, you know, and we have to make some cuts and you're one of the ones we're cutting today. And he was very sad. So he went to the beach and he found his treasure chest. And from a distance, happiness began to grow within his heart. As he opened the treasure chest, my dear brothers and sisters, what happened? He saw coins inside the chest that were golden in color. And what took place there? He, my dear brothers and sisters, went from sadness to elation based on likes. He likes gold coins. He thinks it will bring him happiness. Therefore, he becomes excited when he sees the coins, Vasanas. Then, he went home with the chest, he packed up the treasure chest, put it in his car, took the treasure chest home. His family saw him coming, they became sad. Because he was a sad person. They became sad when they saw him coming, can you imagine? When he came with the treasure chest and put the chest on the table, they all became happy. Happiness and sadness, my dear brothers and sisters, come like the waxing and wanings of the moon. And when the appraiser came, my dear friends, and he looked carefully at the gold coins, they were so happy when, he saw, when they saw the coins. They were so happy when they saw the coins. And what happened as the appraiser came? When he looked at the coins, he said that these coins are fake. And they all became sad once again. So do you see our lives? Our lives are like this. One thing on the outside brings us happiness. Another thing comes, it brings us sadness, my dear friends. This whole world, Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, Agama apayano anityaha tam titikshasva bharata. Things are coming and going in this world, but you have to have what is called titiksha. Titiksha means what? The ability to forbear the pinpricks of this life. And the one who can do that constantly will always bring happiness. This was wrong. Now what about Bharat? Vishwa Bharana Poshana Karjoi To the one who is Vishwa Bharan, 
पोषण कर जोई to the one who upholds the world to the one who supports others to the one who encourages others and provides palan or poshan palan or poshan kya matlab kya hai palan means protection poshan means nourishment and mind you as i'm saying these chopais and i'm describing bharata rama i want you to know that these are not different from you these are qualities that we have to imbibe within us before death comes my dear brothers and sisters because if it's one thing we're guaranteed it is that we are going to die but the question is are you going to die with a smile on your face or are you going to die sad and there are many people who have much money in this world lots and lots of paisa both sare bank account hai but guess what they're not happy they're not happy what brings us happiness my dear brothers and sisters why do we pray to mahalakshmi navaratri is coming why do we pray to mahalakshmi lakshmi karo tu kalyan aarogyam sukh sampradha mama shatru vinashaya deepa jyotir namostute we pray to mahalakshmi why lakshmi karo tu kalyanam you are the source of kalyan you are the source of inner bliss you are the source of inner happiness how do we gain that inner bliss and peace arogyam sukh sampradha please destroy both mentally and physically the diseases that i'm suffering from and what are the diseases of the mind kaam krodh lobha moha mat matsarya selfishness anger greed attachment force pride and jealousy as we learn in the military not me because i'm afraid but the military when you have soldiers what do they learn the art of warfare and what is the most important art lesson in warfare that an enemy seen is easily conquered you can never conquer an enemy that is unseen we are learning from this prayer that selfishness anger greed attachment false pride and jealousy come as a result of us being in this world and if these are controlling our minds on a daily basis based on expectation of how things should be in this world it is a losing battle my dear brothers and sisters and when that time comes when yamaraj comes to get us we are going to die with the frown you know there's a joke one day yamaraj came to the home of someone rang the doorbell and he came in and the man said oh my lord it is yamraj made him a meal that he could not pass up yamraj he could not pass up this meal yamraj ate to his stomach's contentment and then after the meal he fell asleep so when yamraj fell asleep now guess what the man did he took yamraj's list you know yamraj has a list right He took that list, scratched his name off from top, switched it with the person that was on the bottom, put his name on the bottom. So when Yamaraja woke now, he said, "Oh my lord, I slept so good. I feel so happy. You fed me and you did so well. I'm going to take whoever's name is on the bottom and put him on the top and take the name from the top and put it on the bottom, which is yours because you're obviously, obviously next." And you know, Yamaraja, poor thing, took him. <laughs> so my dear friends this is what happens we don't know when death will come death can come at any time but if we're constantly drowned with selfishness anger greed attachment how can we ever experience that ocean of joy that god has intended you to experience the goal of this human life my dear friends is god realization not 100 million dollars in the bank having money is good but having peace of mind is the greatest wealth you can ever have and with peace of mind what happens to you vishwa bharan poshan kar joi you become someone who nourishes the world with your resources you identify people who need help and you go out of your way to help them to inspire them to take them to the next level you know sometimes we look at our phones and it's somebody who needs help and what happens we press the red button isn't that true i've done it i don't think you have 
And we say, Hare, it's too late, Yaar. I don't want to talk to this person right now. And then the next day we find out that they may be no more. So in our lives, we just don't know when someone reaches out to you for help. When someone reaches out to you, it is because the Lord has put them there. What is called the Ishwara, which is the governor of this Maya Prapancha. You know what is the governor of this world? And it's not Donald Trump and Biden. There is a governor of this world and it's called Ishwara. And it's constantly putting people in our way. Why? Because we have unfinished business with them. You know, sometimes we dislike another person. Isn't that true? Sometimes we avoid people. Isn't that right? You know what happens when we do that? We have to face them in the next life. This is the cause of rebirth. So in our minds, if we can shed all of the hatred, as Bhagavad Gita says, chapter 12, verse 13, Advaishta sarva bhutana maitra karuna evacha nirmamo nirahankara samadukka sukhakshami Advaishta sarva bhutana Have no hatred for anyone. Instead, maitra karuna evacha Be a friend of the world. Let them not like you. It's okay. Whoever it is, let them not like you or care for you. It's fine. You love them and kill them with kindness. Such a person is no longer, my dear brothers and sisters, a slave of their mind. Such a person no longer has burden anymore. Such a person finds that strength within to help the downtrodden, to help as many people as possible. You know why? Because they don't want to face it in the next life. They face it now and they're able to be effective. You know why? Because it's time that we treat our problems as responsibilities and not the other way around. So this is Vishwa Bharana, the one who upholds this world, protecting Palan, Poshan, nourishing the world. And what does it mean? Not only food, nourishing the world with spiritual knowledge. For those of you who attend satsang on a regular basis, you know what you have to do? You have to share that knowledge. Tonight, after this satsang, you should call five people, each and every one of you, five people, and share what you learned tonight with them. And if you do so, not only will you get punya, but you will get the ability to build that inner spiritual strength and say to yourself that I've actually made an impact in this world. I am not worthless. I am worth something. Why? Because God has given me that life, that power, that light within. To the one who upholds this world, to the one who helps others, to the one who upholds dharma. What is dharma? Dharma is being at peace with who you are. When you are peaceful, my dear brothers and sisters, you are dharmic. When you are not peaceful, you are adharmic. This is dharma, adharma. Many people have different interpretation of dharma and adharma. The simple meaning of dharma is peace versus unrest. Finding that ocean of joy, Jodhananda, Sindhu Sukarasi. Finding that inner bliss and living in that inner bliss, no matter what is going on around you, not being dependent on the world for happiness, but instead sharing that happiness with the world, such a person is dharmic in this life. Such a person who gives more than they take, that person who upholds society with their lessons, with their actions, with their thoughts, with their words, such a person is Bharat. Bharan iti Bharat, the one who upholds this world and protects all. Then, Jake Sumiran Tere Punasha Nama Shatrugna Beda Prakasha. To the one who you simply have to remember and all of the enemies within that stop you from enjoying peace of mind or destroy, such a person is called Shatrugna. So if you find yourself plagued with enemies of the mind, and all of us are, I get angry when my toast is burnt. I'll be the first to admit. But you are all saintly people. You don't get angry. What is the difference between the saint and a normal person? or the sadhu and a normal person. What is the difference? 
The difference is the absence of calm, crowd, lobe, moha, mud, matsarya, selfishness, anger, greed, attachment, false pride, and jealousy. The six enemies that are destroying us daily, my dear brothers and sisters. When we can move beyond these six enemies, what will happen? We would have enjoyed the bliss of Rama. Look at the thought flow. To experience Rama, you must go beyond yourself. You must serve the world. You must do something that is beyond the whims and fancies of your own existence. And in the same Ram Charitamaras, it says, my dear brothers and sisters, that the person who looks at his problems like a grain of sand and sees his neighbor's problem, even though sand like, like Mount Miru or the greatest mountain in this world, such a person is on the way to dissolving the individuality. And it is the individuality, the perceiver, the feeler, the thinker that is embodied in this body, mind, and intellect that allows